This video is brought to you by The Daily Briefing. When Macron first announced the so-called European political community a couple of months ago, it was met with widespread scepticism. The UK saw it as yet another branch of the European Union, and the other non-EU members suspected it might be a means for keeping them at arm's length while the EU deals with its enlargement fatigue. However, its first meeting last week went remarkably well. So, in today's video, we thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at the new initiative, explain what it's all about, and do our best to evaluate it. First, a bit of context. The European political community is essentially Macron's idea, and was first formally announced on the 9th of May, when Macron made a speech at the European Parliament. According to Macron, this would be a new European organisation to provide a space for democratic European nations with, quote, shared core values to cooperate in a variety of policy areas, including security, energy and free movement of people. Macron suggested that the EPC would be not only open to countries such as Ukraine and the Western Balkan states, which are seeking to join the EU, but also those who have left the EU, i.e. the UK. Macron apparently sees the EPC as a forum for maintaining cordial relations between all the European states and a vital instrument in maintaining European unity against the threat of Russian aggression. So how does this EPC differ from other forums such as the NATO, OSCE or Council of Europe? Well, for one, the Americans aren't involved, which is consistent with Macron's idea of strategic autonomy. It's also significantly larger than any other group, with 44 participants. 27 are in the EU, 4 from the EFTA, but the rest have no direct connection to the EU. Macron is determined that the EPC will not be dominated by the EU, which is why every biannual summit will alternate between EU and non-EU capitals. Somewhat predictably, the EPC has already come under some criticism despite the fact that there's only been one meeting. Pessimistic analysts suggest it will be a waste of time. It's too big without any clear agenda, doomed to end up like the Union for the Mediterranean, which was established in 2008 by the then French president Nicolas Sarkozy, in a futile attempt to improve communications between EU countries and their Mediterranean neighbours. Others have argued that the EPC is a French-led effort to prevent further EU enlargement. They claim the EPC is Macron's preferred destination for both the Western Balkans and the Eastern Partnership EU candidates, so Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia, instead of full EU membership. This would be similar to Francois Mitterrand's concentric circles, or the more recent two-speed Europe ideas that have been floating around Brussels for quite some time now. The concept that there should be an inner core of quote-unquote proper EU states who can get on with full political and economic integration, so the Euro and Schengen, etc., and then an outer core of EU curious states who can just meander alongside. This has been very much opposed by EU candidate states who want to be full members, not just tagalongs. They see the inner core idea as essentially elitist and a way of further concentrating power into the hands of just a few inner EU states. This is essentially true of the Balkan countries, who have been deeply frustrated about the deadlock in their bids to join the EU. Albania and other Balkan countries have had EU candidate status for years, North Macedonia since 2005 and Albania since 2014. The Western Balkans, similar to Turkey, have big Muslim communities, and some say this is the major reason Macron doesn't want them inside the EU, as they claim Macron is petrified of Le Pen and other French Islamophobic right-wingers who would use EU enlargement against his or any other pro-EU French political party in any future election. Nonetheless, whilst it's come under some criticism, the first meeting was apparently pretty successful. For starters, it looks like it's gone down well with Downing Street. As you might have noticed, UK-EU relations haven't been particularly friendly in recent years. Accordingly, Truss was reluctant to attend the first EPC meeting, and even demanded that no EU flags be present at the summit. 
In the end, she did attend, and after the meeting, Macron and Truss pledged to hold a UK-France summit in 2023 to take forward a renewed bilateral agenda. And Truss stressed that Macron was indeed a friend, something she'd refused to do during her leadership campaign. For his part, Macron said he hoped the meeting marked the beginning of the day after and a new phase in UK-EU relations. Clearly, the EPC has succeeded in breaking the frosty ice between the UK and Europe. On top of that, the EPC succeeded in at least getting President of Azerbaijan Ilham Iliev and Prime Minister of Armenia Nikol Pashinyan in a room together. For those of you who don't know, Azerbaijan and Armenia have a long-standing border dispute over the Nagorno-Karabakh region, known as Artsakh by most Armenians. And a few months ago, Azeri forces staged an unprecedented attack against Armenian positions within Armenia proper. There's been widespread speculation that Azerbaijan attacked when they did because Russia, Armenia's only real security partner, was preoccupied with Ukraine. And the fact that Putin was unable to mediate peace talks between the two sides seemed to confirm this. At the EPC, the two sides sat down with Macron and the President of the European Council, Charles Michael, eventually agreeing to facilitate a civilian EU mission on the Armenia-Azerbaijan border, which will start in October for a maximum of two months. Obviously, this is good news in and of itself, but the fact that the EU has replaced Russia as the geopolitical heavyweight in the region is also bad news for Putin's international standing. It's possible that the EPC will similarly improve relations between the EU and its other neighbours. The EU neighbourhood policy is widely regarded as essentially insufficient, especially in regards to Turkey and the Balkans. The EPC represented an opportunity to reignite ties with this region, especially as China and Russia have become more influential in the area in recent years. To conclude, while it's too early to say for certain whether or not the EPC will be a success or failure, its first meeting went remarkably well, and the omens look good. As things stand, it looks like Macron's occasionally indulgent interests in big picture thinking has paid off, and the EPC may well become both an instrument to further the EU's political influence in its neighbourhood regions and an important political forum in its own right. But that's not all that's happening in the world, so if you want to stay on top of the news, you should check out The Daily Briefing. That's our show where we break down the four biggest news stories each day, giving you an outline of the news you need to know, ensuring you're always informed and up to date, and unlike other similar shows, ours has the normal TLDR style, which means it's quick, easy to understand, unbiased, independent, and usually hosted by me. You can watch on YouTube or Nebula by subscribing to the TLDR Daily channel. It's linked below, or you can listen by searching in your favourite podcast app.